Hello everyone, we'll start very soon. Let me know if there are sound issues. Hello, cat girl Aurora. Hello, Mihail. Okay. Link the the slides. Uh, how is my voice quality? Any noise? Is it good? And if it is, we can start right away. Okay. Okay. Let's go. So, uh... This is lesson 10 of our bootcamp and this is the final lesson of chapter 1 which concludes the fundamentals section. Fundamentals that basically applies to every language regardless of paradigm. Um, so today is a lesson about random, div and mod. Uh, what will we talk about? We'll talk about how to find even and uneven numbers. We'll talk about how to uh, apply finding even and even numbers uh, for Caesar cipher. So we'll learn how to use mod and apply it in basic encryption. We'll talk about how to generate various random things such as numbers, whole numbers, floats, bytes, strings. We'll talk about how to take control of random, how to predict random sequence of numbers, and about pitfalls that can, may happen if you use random too recklessly. Let's start with very simple thing. And actually, this should have been uh, taught way at the start because it's really trivial but I kind of forgot to mention it so it needs to be mentioned now or never. So as you already know if we divide uh, with simple division sign forward slash uh, number from another number which is an integer both are integers we'll get an integer and the uh, remainder after division uh, will remain. So if remainder remains, where is it? How to get it? Uh, as it is useful to get just the whole number that we get as a result of division, we also have cases where it makes sense getting just uh, the remainder. And to get the remainder, it's a percent sign. Uh, in some languages it's called mod and the previous one is called div but it's it's a percent sign it's mod and it takes the remainder so if I say 5 mod 2 I get 1 meaning which I could divide 5 into parts but there is one that is left for full result so um, when there is a sequence of repeating characters, when you need to repeat the sequence again and again, uh, uh, and, and when you hit the end, you want to start at the start, 
this uh, mod operation helps a lot. Also, uh, when you check if a number is even or uneven, it also helps because uneven numbers, when you divide them from two, uh, you will get a, a remainder of one. So is five an uneven number? I divide five from two using mod and indeed I got one, which is uh, an indicator that five is an uneven number. So you can check a number is even or uneven using mod operation. And in fact, like I mentioned, for sequences that repeat themselves and for sequences that um, uh, continue and start over, uh, such as an alphabet, imagine if you went A, B, C, D, E, F, and then so on, all the way to Z, and when you hit Z, you increment the index of a letter, and you start at 1. And how could you do that? You could do that by, the, uh, by dividing everything using mod operation. So divide everything, the last index, by a mod operation, and you'll get the first index. So if I divide 27 from 26, I'll start at one. Or if I hit the end, 26 from 26, I'll end up at zero. So that's how you can start the sequence of alphabet. Now, Caesar cipher. Caesar cipher is very simple. Basically, it means that uh, my message, ev every letter in my message gets shifted. The position of that letter gets shifted by two, by three, by four, by five, or whatever. Whatever is the shift that I use to encrypt my message. And so if the shift was two, that means every letter shifts by two positions. So A becomes C and B becomes D. If I shift by three, it means that A becomes D and B becomes E. So plus three positions. And deciphering is actually the opposite. You just move three positions back. Now let's talk about a more interesting thing, which is a random. Um, so in C sharp, all randomization well, not all randomization, but most of it will be done using random class. As long as you don't care about security, you'll be using random class because uh, even though it's only pseudo random, it is an efficient way of genera generating random things. Random enough for us, for our liking. Uh, so the most basic and common thing that you'll do with random is generating random uh, numbers, uh, whole numbers, random integers. And when you generate random integers, you have basically three options. You can either say, give me a next without passing anything, and that will return any integer whatsoever from zero to integer max. If you pass uh, a number inside next, it will generate a random number from zero all the way to that number, but that number is not inclusive. So if I say, give me random next, and I give it 10, it will generate any number between zero and nine. And lastly, if I pass a range I can pass a range, so it will generate every uh, a random number between that range, but also the end of range, the upper bound is non-inclusive. So in the example below, the two numbers uh, will be generated in a consistent way with using the same range. For generating doubles, or in other words, numbers with fraction, how many possibilities are there to generate a random number with fraction? Like the fraction can shift hard. 
really lots of times and the precision is basically non-existent. So does it make sense to allow generating random doubles all the way up to um, int, uh, sorry, all, to, all the way up to double dot max? It doesn't make sense. And so when you generate doubles, you get a number between zero and one. And that's the only option you have. There is no range option, unlike for ints. However, so when I say next double, I'll get a number between zero and one. And it's almost 100% that it will never be zero. And it's guaranteed that it will never, never be one. However, if I want to have a more meaningful, bigger number, not just zero to one, but I want to say it's percents, uh, I can say, I can multiply what uh, whatever double gets returned from a hundred or any other number. And basically by multiplying it to a hundred, it is equivalent to passing 100 for an integer. That's how I increase the range. That's how I can increase the bound by myself, by just multiplying the result. Because at most, in this case, it will be a hundred. It'll never be a hundred but it will be very close to 100, uh, possibly. So like this, I can generate numbers from 0 to 100 that are doubles. And it's an interesting thing that uh, we can also generate uh, bytes with random. So. Uh, Generating bytes with random is quite different because you have very little control. Um, and so all I need to do is to create a byte array. And if I pass that byte array into next bytes for random, it will fill it with numbers from zero to 255. So what can I do with bytes? Remember what byte was based on? Byte was based on uh, ease of converting it to character. So if I want to convert, uh, to generate random strings, it's very convenient to generate a byte array, then uh, to um, get uh, characters of that byte array and then turn that characters array into a string. So that's how you can basically generate random words or parts of words. So it's really also cool to apply random like this. I think to note though, that as I mentioned at the start, random is not completely random. It's only pseudo random, meaning which there is an initial number which influences the rest of randomization. And that number is, is called a seed. So when we create random, a new instance of random, we pass a new seed. And that seed determines how the sequence of random numbers will be generated. And uh, different sequences uh, different instances of random with same seed will produce the same sequences of random numbers. So if I know um, what seed was given to a random, I can predict playback what the results will be. Um, and for this reason, uh, if I generate a new instance, if I create a new instance of random multiple times uh, in under 50 milliseconds, that will actually produce the same sequences of random numbers. It is not guaranteed to produce the same sequences of random numbers, but it is very likely that it will happen. So, yeah. And... So uh, if we go back 
uh, when you create a random instance, an instance of random, you actually pass an environment tick count. So a random seed by default is based on system clock. And of course, clock is a variable thing. It changes, it's time. So in normal cases, just creating new random without the seed is enough because it will give it a seed and that seed will be enough to make it randomize numbers in some way. The seed, I think, is an int, though it could be a long as well. I'll double check. I'm pretty sure the seed is an int, it's just an integer. It's definitely not a float, not a double. Um, so be careful when you create multiple random, just one random is enough. And if you want to be in control, in generating random numbers, uh, pass a C that you know. So in the example that we had before, for example, pass explicitly a system clock and store it somewhere. And if you manage to get back the system clock, the seed that was used for uh, creating an instance of random, that means you can do lots of cool stuff with random because now you have the same seed and so you can uh, play back the random generation of elements, of different elements, because you have that seed. Having the seed of random means that you can do the same that happened the last time random was activated. For example, if I create five instances of random using the same seed and from five instances I call next once, I'll get the same number in all five calls. So having a seed means you're in control. Keep it if you want to be in control. This is quite important for testing applications, if I know what seed I used, I can play back, let's say, the game flow with random choices made by a computer, by AI, and, and test it like that. Now let's go to Visual Studio. Uh, there isn't much to show, to be honest. Uh, just a little demo of what happens, how numbers change, and so on. So let's debug and see what happens. And that first question is the seed int. And the answer is it's an integer. Yes. So here we generate, here we created a new random. So a random with some seed. Uh, if I say next, it will give me any number between zero and int max. So as you can see, it gave me this number. Doesn't matter really, but it's a random number, any random number, integer. This one gives me up to nine, and this one also gives me up to nine. Calling in succession is not a bad thing. I, um, I'm not generating, I'm not creating different random instances. I'm just generating different random numbers. So it's all good. Next. Mm. Here I generated next double. So next double, as we said, returns up to one. So it returns 0 0.7269 and so on. And if I want to increase the range, just not leave it up to one, but something more, I can. And so you can see it's four to seven now still a double. So if I want to generate a random word, I can as well. So here I created an empty bytes array and then I said next bytes and it populates this bytes array with bytes and bytes are essentially ints from zero to two, five, five. So there's no magic here. Just 
uh, randomization done internally with hard coded range. And as you can see, it passed and this is the random bytes it generated. And of course, with a given encoding, if I know the encoding I want, I can get characters that get converted from the bytes. So I did get characters. It's actually quite, quite crazy, I would say. Wait, uh, yeah, uh, you see ASCII, the original ASCII doesn't support uh, um, characters after 127. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's why that's why uh, all that is above 127, it becomes uh, a question mark. So first, second, fifth, sixth, and eighth are all question marks, as you can see. And also this one is a highlight, I would say, because uh, we, we cannot, for some reason, display a special character. And so they, uh, in Visual Studio, chose to represent it as uh, a, a Unicode, an escaped character. So we get our string from, from the uh, random bytes. And lastly, we um, we prove that creating random is the same using those two. Uh, actually, it's probably not entirely the same. It also depends on the on the implementation of .NET. So, if I use my own computer with the same .NET version and I know the seed that was used to generate random numbers, by calling, by creating random with that seed, I'll always get the, get the, the same symbol, the same sequence of numbers. However, if, for example, person A uses .NET version 4 and person B uses .NET version 2, they will get completely different results because implementation of randomizing numbers was different across different .NET framework versions. So lastly, look what I just did. I created two instances of random. One instance was um, with uh, basically both instances uh, with system clock as a seed. So we created both with the same in, uh, seed basically. And when I generate random numbers, look what happens. This one is this, and this one is the same. Okay. <laughs> of course it's the same. Hmm, all right, so it is the same and it's probably the same due to, hmm, I wonder why, but let's pass in a seed as a proof that uh, random of same seed is the same. Okay, so we passed in the same seed and it was exactly the same. Yeah, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, let's try uh, num1, num2. And V 
read. Yeah, it's still different. Interesting. Really interesting. That's a, a actually unexpected. Unexpected behavior to me. Um, um, let's make a, a more realistic one. You will never do something like this. However, you might do something like in a loop. Like printing numbers in a loop. I don't have a breakpoint. There is no breakpoint. Um, yeah, I know. Vic's done. I was also getting the same number. Uh, I, I remember for sure a year ago, me and my friends were generating random numbers in a loop. And we somehow put the random initialization within the loop instead of outside it or in a function call. So here's what happened. Uh, so we have, we won't have a for each, of course. I don't know why I wrote for each. All I want is a for loop. So let's generate a hundred random numbers, right? Pseudo random. So we'll do something like this. And yeah, I should have flipped that one, but it's fine. Uh, how do I do the loop so quickly was the question. In C Sharp, we have something called code snippets. So when you see something with this uh, dashed corner kind of thing, it's a code snippet. So the code snippets for four, for each reverse for loop properties, constructors, pr pretty much all the common things. And in fact, you can make your own as well. So when, when you see something like this, you can just select, uh, uh, press tab and it will generate the loop for you. All right. So we have a for loop. It will do something a hundred times. So we're going to generate, um, so we're going to generate uh, a bunch of random numbers a hundred times. And the key point here is that we use the same, the same random, basically a very similar uh, random instance. It's definitely under 15 seconds. And, and, and as the uh, documentation, they mentioned that if you generate random, if you create a new instance of random, within a quick succession under 15 seconds, it is likely to produce um, random, uh, uh, the same sequences of numbers. So Yeah, this is really interesting. Uh, what about if we use a range? Okay. This is really interesting. Actually, you know what? Let's play around. Let's create a .NET, not .NET Core console application, but .NET. Uh, not test. .NET. Using random. I mean, uh, Resho, yes, you are correct. It should be outside the scope, but that's the point. We're simulating something done wrong. 
it, it, yeah, that's that's my thinking. Where's console? Console or dot net? Console F sharp core dot net framework. Uh, how did I call it? Bootcamp chapter. Uh, no core. Oh, what did I do? Uh, boot camp dot chapter no core. That's really cool though that we managed to find something like this. Okay. Let's put dot net four point, I guess six. Boom. If if I declare random before loop, that, that will make no sense. I mean it's it's the same thing. Yes, it is creating a new instance of random every loop. And that's the point. If I create um, a new instance of random using a similar seed, it should return a similar, or in most cases, in an exact same sequence of numbers. So if I call next every time I, cre I just created it, 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 in theory, should return the same, um, the same sequence of numbers, so the same number. But, but maybe this was happening so often that they actually fixed it. So it's really interesting to... Yes, it's a new object with the same seed. So a new object with the same seed will produce the same sequence. Plot thickens. It's still the same. Hmm. Let's quickly refer to the docs. Because I read the article yesterday, just to be sure. Uh, so the system clock doesn't detect time differences that are less than approximately 15 seconds. Therefore, if your code calls the random overall on the framework instantiate two random objects in succession, you might inadvertently be providing objects of identical seed values. And the random class in .NET Core does not have this limitation. And it's definitely milliseconds. Less than 15 milliseconds. A single loop iteration is less than 15 milliseconds. And this doesn't work in, I mean, In here, it's it's .NET, not .NET Core. It's .NET. Whoa, what am I doing? Properties. This is .NET Framework, but we couldn't reproduce it in here. It 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 is under fifteen seconds. Okay, let's 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 play around. Let's be crazy. Let's go to .NET Framework 4, to the ancient times. Wow. Why did I click it again? Jeez. Okay, let's go all the way to .NET Framework 2. 
Link U doesn't exist. <laughs> wow. It's still different results. Why, why are you saying it's normal? It's not normal. It wasn't like this, I agree. Okay, let's do something like this though, it's the same. Yeah. Uh, weren't you initially testing the difference of two different random seeds? Uh, the thing is, this takes system clock as a seed. So when this takes system clock as a seed, if it's under 15 seconds, according to Microsoft documentation, it should produce a very similar sequence of numbers. Um, let's try one more thing. Let's try um, .NET fiddle. I'm also curious. So for int i is zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, um, bar random is new random, no seed. How long, okay, Mihail, how long does one loop iteration take? Is it less than the number you wrote? Okay, proof, proof. Here you go, guys. So in this browser environment, it's giving the same random number because I'm using the same sequence. For example, if I used a seed, which is a loop counter, you see, I, I get random numbers, but if I don't use uh, a different seed, I get the same numbers, but why is it different result on my machine? This is bothering me because this is inconsistent. It's at all inconsistent. Actually, let's, 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 oh my God. Okay. I actually have this in here so I can just copy it. Yeah, they must have changed something. L okay, so they said they fixed it in .NET Core. Let's see if they really, really fixed it. Yeah, they did. All right, that's cool. That's really cool to just, you know, explore things. Um, I don't know, cat girl. Aurora. I really don't know. But this is really interesting discovery. Uh, what works on your machine ratio? Like works in, in what way you, you get the same result or different results, different numbers. Mm hmm it's weird it's really weird okay let's let's be goofy stupid really unpro like completely silly and do something like mm, I am 
I'm not in this one. Let, let's let's go back to this one and let's do parallel forage. Overkill. Ah, um, and let's let's not. It's it's ignore what I just did. Anyways, don't do this. This is bad. Um, no, they did not fix it in .NET Core. They fixed it in .NET Core. Uh, in .NET 4.7, from this, we can also see that it produces the same results. So they did not fix it in .NET 4.7. So .NET is not fixed. Core is fixed. Yeah, this is really bizarre. Worth investigating. Okay, let's move on. So this is all I wanted to show for this lesson, really. And now let's do a quick Kahoot. So Kahoot hype, please. Oh god, crazy people. Okay, five players, let's wait half a minute more and we'll start. Okay, I think we can start. So, random. As a is an integer, how to determine if number is even? Well done, except one person. So this is the answer that is correct because even numbers will not have a remainder after dividing from two. What is a Caesar cipher? Well done. Next. What's wrong with this picture? Do we have seven players? We do. And yeah, nothing is wrong with it. I mean, uh, those who chose uh, expects parameters uh, for 
next it doesn't. Uh, for next it doesn't expect parameters because just like ne uh, next double, next int is just the predetermined range from one to int max. Sorry, Stuart. Is the range for first and second dot next calls the same? So we have those two and way too less time. So quickly read. <laughs> And the answer is it's not the same because one is from zero to nine and the other one is from zero to 10. And in, in both cases, it's, it's not inclusive. Is it possible to randomize a string? Can we randomize a string using random? Is. You do it by randomizing bytes and then converting that from ASCII into characters and then characters into string. What's po what possible values can this return? I have no idea why is it the minute time, but okay. Yeah, it's a sneaky one. Remember, range is non-inclusive, so it doesn't ever get to one. It's zero up to zero, so it's always zero. What is the closest biggest possible number returned? It's not <laughs> double max, no, um, because it's from zero to one. It's from zero to one because there is no point generating it all the way to max double. It's such a big range, right? So you can simply multiply the result from whatever range you want from, let's say, a thousand and it will increase that much by that much. So. There is no point to having double max by default. Thus, it's just up to one. So we have a Caesar cipher with shift two. And we have a message hi. And we encrypt this message using the cipher. How will this message look like encrypted? Well done, well done. So we shift every character by two positions and we get JK. Let's see the winner. Arara, number three, Resho the second, and number one, Aurora, cat girl Aurora. Stuart and Explo runners up. <laughs> it's okay, Roloff. You had your uh, moment last game. 
So for the next lesson, the homework is to implement Caesar Cipher in a program. You'll have to use uh, both encryption and decryption using a given um, shift. So when you create a, an encrypt, encryptor decryptor, you pass in a shift. And you simply then pass encrypt or decrypt a string and it needs to encrypt and decrypt the, the message that you pass. That's a homework for the next lesson. And um, before we end, uh, it, it is case sensitive. Yes, you need to take in consideration capital letters too. Um, a few more things, don't leave yet. Um, I have some surprises. So surprise number one, uh, um, Josh Mond, Captain Crunch and uh, L Master, I'll be giving you guys uh, keys for Resharper for helping uh, with the bootcamp. So free keys for Resharper or any other JetBrains product. And um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but uh, two weeks ago, me, Captain Crunch and Josh Mont, we did a podcast on common beginner mistakes. And that podcast has been edited, recorded. So no, no video, I think. Yeah, no video, just the slides and... Um, and a voice recording, but it's a cool one. So here you go. Um, the host of this podcast is Captain Crunch. So I highly recommend checking his other videos. He is dedicated to making videos for junior developers or people who starting to program and he is more focused on um, the mental state of a developer, on a healthy developer, on how to overcome your fears, like imposter syndrome and stuff like that. But this podcast is uh, very focused on beginner mistakes. Beginner mistakes and in correlation with um, senior developer how how different senior developer mistakes are to beginner developer mistakes. So I really recommend everyone to watch this. It's just one hour, not watch, but listen. There is no video. Uh, also slides, uh, you can find slides in, in the link uh, there. All right, I should push this. Okay, so let's call it .NET. Uh, let's call it random lesson, lesson, lesson 10 done. Also, one more note. On Sunday, I won't be giving a lesson. Next lesson will be on Wednesday. I won't be giving a lesson on Sun, uh, Saturday. Sorry, not Sunday. I won't be giving a lesson on Saturday because I want to... Yeah, on Saturday. Uh, I won't. Uh, because I want to catch up with all the bootcamp things we've done so far. So I want to finish all the wikis for all the 10 lessons. And I want to finish writing tests for the lessons I didn't cover with tests. So there's quite some catching up for me to do. Also, I want you guys to catch up at least to be a bit closer to the actual, you know, homework, because I know for a fact that there's so many people who haven't done the newest homeworks and I think it's due to the tempo we're moving at. There is a lot of homework, but not so much time. And I think you guys need more time. So I'm giving you more time. Exactly. <laughs> um, also, uh, one more thing, um, a huge thing actually. So, um, I will need to make a big, massive meeting of everyone 
both mentors and students and I need feedback and this time feedback not from uh, some paper some some survey but from pe feedback from live people everyone in, in one big meeting talking together one by one expressing their opinions and how will it work well basically you will I, I will be asking you guys how do you feel what do you think about different aspects and basically one by one we'll be going through people how they feel what they think and um if other people disagree we'll let those who disagree talk and just have a good understanding of what is going on and how can we make this bootcamp better because i'm i'm pretty sure i'm doing something wrong and i think i can improve if i really understand what you guys expect and want so that there is that so that's it for this lesson i think also we're gonna change the format of lessons uh, to not maybe two hours i think one hour lessons work pretty fine i think this lesson like we learned quite a lot and I think th there wasn't too much info, there wasn't too little info, and I think this lesson was just enough info for you to understand. So if we keep up, keep keep this kind of content, this much material and this tempo uh, right, right now, right there, like this, I think we can achieve nice results. So that's it for this lesson. Thank you everyone for being there and see you on next Wednesday. Take care.